is Scott Stengel from the Melco Applications team. I'm here today to talk a little bit about the different methods for cutting applique fabric. Um, we've gotten some emails recently as well as I've seen some stuff on social media. Uh, questions like, I have a, a cutter, is it compatible with Design Shop? The answer is definitely yes. Um, so today we'll cover the different methods for uh, cutting out applique, whether you have a cutter or you don't. Um, <clears throat> if you want to find out more about the digitizing process of uh, applique, all the details, properties, um, we have help for you for that. Um, we have all sorts of videos, so you just fire up your browser and go to melco-service.com and uh, on that site we have an icon right here, um, videos. So once I click on that, it's split into different categories. If I want to uh, understand start to finish how the tool works or how to digitize applique without the tool, we have all the educational and training videos here for uh, Design Shop 10 and 11. <clears throat> for the live presentations where we cover advanced uh, freestanding patches, how to do split front appliques, all sorts of stuff like that, those are all going to be under the live uh, episodes. So I click on live episodes, it tells you here, Control F will do search. So Control F and I just type in applique. And there are four separate videos on uh, different forms of applique. First one is creating custom patches. Also notice you can watch on either Facebook or YouTube depending on your preference. Um, the next one after that is applique start to finish, the whole entire process. Here's another one on applique. Here's one on split fronts if you want to know how to do baseball jerseys where they overlap and uh, have to line up perfectly. We have a whole session on that. And one more Josh did on freestanding patches and how to adhere them actually to um, hats. So the, the patches are appliqued because they're freestanding. So plenty of help on all this stuff. Okay, let's dive right in. <clears throat> so here are two of the same designs basically. The right one here was made manually with a walk stitch um, as the locator and then single lines to do the tack down and the top stitching. And this one over here was done with our applique tool. Um, the more advanced level of design shop has the applique tool. Um, it's really simple. You basically go around the shape once and uh, all the elements are automatically digitized and connected. So if you make a change in the outline of one, they all change. So really nice and fast. Um, but there's a lot of times, even if you have the tool where you're doing very intricate appliques where three or four pieces all come together of applique and they have different outlines and stuff, it's just better to make it with, uh, with the old-fashioned method than it is to do it with the applique tool. But we're going to cover them both. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, easiest I guess is I'm going to make one um, and I don't want to make a pattern. So what you do is you hoop your garment, sweatshirt, whatever in a, in a hoop, put the hoop in the machine, take your applique fabric, cut it larger than the finished size, a little spray adhesive, put it down on top of the garment. <clears throat> the way that the uh, designs are set up is the first thing it does is that locator. That tacks the material to the garment itself. Then you cut around the outside of it really close with applique scissors, which behave differently than regular scissors. They're offset, so you don't uh, nick the fabric as easy, which would ruin the garment. So uh, sew it down, <coughs> cut close to the edge, and then after that it will um, sew down the uh, tackle twill, which is uh, what we call the tack down stitch and then it will sew um, the top stitching which is a, a full satin stitch. Okay so that's the way to do one. Now let's say I don't have a cutter and I need to make 50 of these. Well it's probably going to be worth making a pattern if that's the case. So real simple all I have to do is I select the locator stitch right this is tells me where to put um, the cutout fabric on the garment um, if I'm making a whole bunch of them. So I highlight that. I will take and copy it to a new window. 
sorry, copy it to the clipboard, fire up a new window, and paste it. Okay, <clears throat> so from here, this is all I need um, to make the pattern from. So if I didn't have a cutter, all I have to do is go up to print. Our new print app in V11 is really sweet. And just make sure that actual size here is selected. And you can see that on page two, I will get a printout of the 100% actual size of uh, the applique fabric. So I would print that, and then I would cut it out, and um, I could use that to trace onto my fabric to cut them out. Make sure you cut on the inside of the line, or your pattern keeps growing, because as you cut it on the outside of the line, then you transfer that to, let's say, a more stable material. We used to use uh, manila file folder material. Uh, you could use non-corrugated cardboard. It's just something that's going to hold up better as you trace, you know, volumes of this stuff. Um, and then when you uh, take the pattern and you put it on the fabric and you trace it, if you cut on the outside of that, all of a sudden now your pat pattern is growing and it doesn't fit underneath where it's supposed to. So slightly on the inside of the lines when you cut out the patterns. Also, we put up on them because when I had a shop in Boulder, sure enough, we cut 50 of them or 75 maybe on the wrong side. <clears throat> it was a non-symmetrical pattern, so we had to cut them again. So up is always a good, uh, a good tip. Okay, so that's the way to make the pattern. Then you would trace the pattern onto um, the fabric and cut them out that way. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go back to our design. Okay, so um, <clears throat> if I have the applique tool, um, let me just show you that right here. This is all done, um, like I said, with one line, does everything and gives you a lot of flexibility with it. If I have digitized the applique using the applique tool, um, I still need to get a pattern of this made. So all we have to do in that case is select the applique element, file, save applique outline, pick your format of, uh, geez, whatever you want, wherever you want to put it, and let me see, go here, I'll just call it heart locator. And then I just open that file. And um, then I would uh, do file print for this also. Same deal. So that's the way to make a pattern through your printer if you don't have a cutter, whether you use the applique tool or if you don't. All righty. <clears throat> so the next. Uh, the, the next step is um, if you have a cutter. So what kinds of cutters are there? There's uh, vinyl cutters, there's fabric cutters, and there's also uh, laser um, cutters. <laughs> laser cutters are, you know, the best, but they're also very expensive, eight to twelve thousand um, dollars. They cauterize the edge, which seals it, which is really nice. You can also do all sorts of cool stuff like um, double layers, which is called a kiss cut of applique. Uh, I have a picture here to show you. <clears throat> right here, um, where you've got the blue is the stitching, but the red and the white are actually fabric um, on top of each other. The laser can pulse just enough electricity through it to cut the top layer of fabric without touching the, the one below it. So really pretty cool stuff um, if you uh, have a laser cutter. Fabric cutters, uh, vinyl cutters are terrific for cutting um, different types of fabric. The most common is a uh, sports twill. It's actually a, a nylon twill fabric. Um, you can buy it on rolls. And uh, it's self-adhesive as well as it has hot melt glue on the back side. And the uh, cutters just uh, go to cutting out this stuff like uh, it's crazy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> also, be aware, however you do the applique pattern making, 
sometimes you're going to have to modify the pattern. Um, you know, like, hey, it's lining exactly like it's supposed to be on the on the screen, but it suffers fabric movement just like embroidery does. And so the direction you go or how you stitch it down and what goes over it, it will sometimes um, make different parts hang out that you, you know, like, why is this happening? Just know it's not you. It happens uh, to all of them, especially the more intricate shapes. And shaving a little bit off of the fabric here, uh, or off the pattern here, there is, um, you know, going to help and it's going to work every time. So that's kind of a common thing like that. Okay, so <clears throat> now we'll go back to this and let's say that um, I don't have the applique tool or I didn't use it, but I do have a cutter. All I have to do in this case, just like I did before, highlight the locator or the walk stitch. Now with cutters you need to make sure that it's a closed element. So if I zoom into this, you can see right here that the start is, uh, is right here and the stop is right here. So there's a little distance between the two. Design Shop connects them up, but depending on uh, certain cutters, it might leave a little void here which uh, you know is kind of just a, a nag more than anything because you go to pull off the fabric from the release paper and there's a little area that gets it stuck. Um, so just make sure that your start and your stop of the locators um, line up. If you use the applique tool they always are closed shapes. Um, so no problem there but just make sure these two um, line up. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, first I'm going to turn on the, the point list, which gives me these triangles so I can get more detail. These are the locations and the types of straights and curves of all the nodes I put in for this locator stitch. So obviously the first and the last are what we're interested in. First one is 580 and X, 360 and Y. If I go down to the last one, you'll see that it's not the same. Double click brings up uh, properties. I can just change the coordinates. So for this one, I want to go 580 and it's 366 is, uh, needs to be 360. When I hit OK, boom, it moved over. Now it's uh, perfectly closed shape, so you're not going to get any tug of wars going on with your um, fabric. OK, so <clears throat> what I do is highlight the closed element and I will copy it uh, to the clipboard and I will open up a new window and I will paste it in there. I like to center them. <clears throat> now what you need to do at this point is go to your cutter and find out what format does it read. Um, very common is uh, BMP, uh, JPEG, SVG is probably the lion's share. EPS uh, is very common also. Um, or uh, Melco also sells the Roland line um, of cutters and printers and all that. Um, <clears throat> all we have to do in that case is I just highlight this element, I copy it to the clipboard, I switch over to Cut Studio as their program for cutting that goes with their cutters. I paste it. <laughs> And it's right there. I duplicate, make my rows of how many uh, you know copies I want, and hit start. So we don't even have to save uh, in that situation. But you'll find a format. Uh, some form, some of them even read DSTs, which is uh, an expanded embroidery format. So you just send it the uh, the locator stitches, and it'll cut from there. So you'll find a format that works. Like I say, SVG is very common. EPS um, and BMP also, but DST is also in the list there. All right, so for this, um, I copied it to a new window and I would go File, Save As, and then I would just pick the format that my uh, cutter reads. S SVG is here, JPEG, Bitmap is right here. Um, I can save it as DST if that's what it goes by, or EPS, which is uh, right down here. So you'll find the format that um, that your cutter uses, and just save the locator stitch in that format, and open it in your cutter software, and proceed from there. All right. 
<coughs> now, let's say that I have the applique tool that I use to make the element. Um, how do I get this to my cutter? You probably already figured this out from previous here. File, Save Applique Outline. <coughs> and then I just would pick the format just like I showed you of what you'd want for that, um, SVG or whatever. And um, I like to keep all the files together. So you have your digitized file. You also have your cut file from here. And out of your uh, cutting software, it's usually good to save the, the repeated pattern for the reorder. They come back, you just um, load the cut file to your cutter, load the fabric, and hit start. Um, OK, so that's the way to save if you're using the um, applique element and you just want to save the uh, locator stitch for your cutter. Also I showed you how to do it if you don't do the applique um, tool. Um, so very very simple really. Um, kind of cool, some, some different things of thinking outside the box. Uh, we did uh, this one here is a fire logo you know, very big on the back of a, of a uh, Carhartt jacket. This has a lot of appliques in it. So a trick that I do is we colorize the locator stitch, something we would you know, not commonly use, fluorescent um, <laughs> here. And so you can see that we've got a locator for the center clover logo. I'm not sure what the actual fire name is for it. I've done zillions of them. Um, but then also we have all the uh, locators for the word rescue and then again for the word fire. Um, <clears throat> this Twill is uh, available from different companies. Twill USA is a great company. Also Stalls um, has it. You buy it on rolls. Um, everything is all put together like I said. It's got the, the glue for sticking it to the garment as well as the hot melt glue when you're all finished. You want to put it in a heat press or an iron to secure it to the garment so it doesn't pucker um, after you wash it. Um, <clears throat> you know, 15 colors is pretty cool. <clears throat> the thing is, what if you have special Pantone colors for colleges or stuff like that? You can uh, get a, a dye sublimate uh, machine and so we buy the Twill White and then we'll dye sublimate it whatever color we need to. This opens you up to the whole world of uh, craziness like we did um, uh, what well, we did this logo here where we actually uh, dye sublimated a fire type pattern that had that um, uh, the, the metal plate you know with the X's that are crossed like you see on bumpers of fire trucks and all that. Um, we did all that for the dye sublimate on this one. Came out really, really cool. There was another one we did um, split front jerseys. Um, and so for this one, all the we did actually it's this is a kiss cut. So it's we did white first and then we went on top of it with red. Um, for the red, we did a starburst pattern that shoots out from all different directions. So you can see this at the trade shows. It's the, the current uh, garment that everybody is wearing at Melco that's um, at the trade show booths. And we did the front and the back and both arms and everything. So super cool. All the options you could have. You could do gradients. You could, the sky's the limit. There's just absolutely no end to it. So hopefully you take advantage of some of that. Um, dye sub machines are not that expensive. Um, also, some cool fabrics. Wow, this is one of our customers, West Broad Apparel. Um, they, uh, this, this is uh, curtails to fire um, departments and all that. And look at that. This is actually fire hose that's appliqued on a freestanding patch, then heat applied right to the um, hat. So crazy kind of fabrics are available to you. We used to use um, Angora fur, which is like a teddy bear fur, and uh, do mascots like um, up in Boulder is the um, Colorado University CU. University of Colorado. Uh, Ralphie is their mascot, who's a buffalo, and uh, we did Angora fur applique sweatshirts for that for little kids. 
we couldn't keep them in stock they they sold so well so all sorts of cool textures and everything for applique um, <clears throat> hopefully uh, you understand now exactly what you need to do to take this applique locator stitch and get it to your cutter um, whether you have or if you don't have a cutter how you can cut them out using patterns or whatnot um, like that um, hopefully you got what you needed out of this one and um, happy cutting and we will talk to you next time.